a, a, a couple of shorts for this uh, PBS sci-fi series called Future States. Oh. Maybe you've heard of that, but uh, futurestates.org, I believe. And um, I also work as an editor, and I'm currently working on the new X-Men, and about to start working on the new Tron. Yeah. yeah. Tron. <laughs> uh, personally, I'm, I'm working on a trilogy of ghost stories. I'm maybe a feature uh, if, if they end up being long enough. And then uh, commercially, I, I've done a few uh, AT&T commercials recently, so don't hate me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually about to kickstart the, uh, the next in the uh, Victorian ghost stories. So if you friend my film on Facebook, um, it's launching on February 10th. And it's, uh, it's more of an Edgar Allan Poe instead of a, a deep sea story. There has been a lot of pressure uh, <laughs> to make a Cats in Space 2. <laughs> and currently, we're not making a Cats in Space 2, and, and that's not a definitive you know, answer for the rest of time, but I'll let James say what we're currently working on. Well, currently we're working on a, a, an action thriller feature that is mostly a Spanish language thing that takes place in Guatemala. But um, another thing that we're actually a little more excited about is after that, we want to do something that's sort of like um, Jerry Anderson's work, like Thunderbirds, and specifically Captain Scarlet and the Misterons, and see if we could sort of get into doing a puppet thing like that, also including some uh, like design elements and pace inspiration from Danger Diabolic. Uh, we have about three different screenplays we're working off of, and we're trying to decide how we want to move forward from a feature standpoint. Uh, we're hoping that the next one is going to be a feature. That's our plan. And, and we are also working with, with Tom on some ideas for uh, actually uh, possibly a comic book. We're doing a comic book. Um, <laughs> I think ours is just like a month. <laughs> I kind of had the puppets built over a six month period, but then when we actually started going, it was a nine month um, process. I uh, wrote the script in September, and I think we wrapped in May. We shot on weekends mostly, like seven days total. Um, <laughs> And I edited it in a few weeks in October, so I don't know what that adds up to, but uh, more or less uh, 10 months or so. Um, I believe I had like two hours to rehearse with the actors. <laughs> and then we shot in a day, and I cut it over about uh, I think three days. But uh, the feature, I've been trying to get the feature off the ground for about six years now. So. Mm -hmm. Um, about a year. I mean, it was structured because it was within a program, but yeah, from start to finish, it, it took about a year between color correction and sound and, and then festivals. Like, uh, that stuff takes a long time. <laughs> yeah. Other questions? Any up on the balcony? Yes, he did. <laughs> Other questions? To use puppets. Um, I, well, I worked in creature effects, and so I started in the 90s and worked for Stan Winston for a long, many years, and then I jumped around to Jim Henson's shop and Weta Workshop and all these places. And so I went to film school, but I never 
really did a film festival film. And uh, so this was my chance to do it. And the puppets are about 30 inches tall. And uh, I just love puppetry. So I wanted to finally do a film. Like I love the Storyteller series and, uh, and mm -hmm. Labyrinth Ooh. and Dark Crystal. And so I just wanted to do some tabletop style, the Bunraku and stuff, it's called. Other questions? I'm curious, um, for any people out in the audience who are aspiring writers, aspiring filmmakers, who want to get their own project off the ground, if you have any advice for people who are looking to, to put something together themselves. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I just say, um, just put it, get it out there. Just start uh, the, uh, the equipment we have so easy to uh, pick up a camera and start doing it. And I'm just learning Kickstarter now, so I, I think it's a wonderful venue to, you know, put a pitch together and get it out there. I would say ditto. Just go ahead and do it. Go ahead and make your first film, second film, etc. Yeah, that, and uh, just keep at it. Don't listen to other people. Uh, a lot of times it's, uh, you know, you, you find that, you know, you figure out a way to do things and even if people, you know, tell you it can't be done, so keep that. Keep your overhead low. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I would say just definitely um, keep your goals in mind and just, you know, be really focused on the story that you want to tell and don't lose sight of that. And get hard, just, just keep in mind, you know, you, you gotta just stay determined. Yeah, we're, we're all saying things along the same line, so I'll throw my boat in with, with everyone else. Uh, one thing, though, is that, I mean, I noticed that they're going to screen uh, the Raiders of the Lost Ark adaptation, and I think, for me, that sort of encapsulates it's per it perfectly. Just go out there and have fun, and uh, another thing is use the very large community that's on the internet to to help yourself grow as an artist. I mean, we started doing Star Wars fan films, and the only reason why we became professional visual effects artists is just because th there is a large level of support of everyone wanting to learn how to make lightsaber videos, and now we're all working for MTV and Disney. <laughs> right. I've actually had a chance to think about it, <laughs> uh, and I would I would quote Charles Bukowski when someone asked him, how do you become a writer? And he said, you don't. You're either doing it now or you're not. And if you're not doing it now, you never will. Um, don't wait for that moment. Uh, start writing and start filming now. Don't, don't tell yourself, I'm gonna wait for that brilliant idea to jump out at me. Because if you're not doing it, you're not gonna be primed and ready once you do have that brilliant moment. Uh, and I'd also say 0% interest credit cards are your friend. <laughs> uh, you know, keep your day job, which is something that we've done. And uh, it's, it's difficult keeping two jobs at the same time, but uh, once you, you know, reach a point, it's definitely you know, each, each moment of brilliance that you see, like once we got towards that from Tom, catapulted us into the next moment, uh, which really helped. So uh, keep, keep, keep working and just don't wait for it. You have to go out and, you have to go out and grab it yourself. Nothing like preparation and getting those, those ideas laid out, talked about, tested on paper, or whatever it means, and it'll save a lot of money, a lot of time, and uh, it's kind of fun too, just to see things happening before you spend the money. Great. Thanks so much, all of you. Uh, thanks for coming up here. Thanks for being here.